Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel Closes and I react where I learn all things power out with your help and I just share my Slovak Central European point of view and uh, today is a part two of the Renewer show on spirituality with the sister Shivani I think is the right name um, and I'm just super stoked uh, so far it's been really amazing conversation we've uh, learn about the impact of awareness meditation and and sleep on uh, on our lives and i'm very curious what we will learn next together but before we do please like this video and click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification thank you so much for your support okay so uh, let's continue it you know if meditation is sort of one of the key factors of human existence in terms of that's the other thing i've realized in the same argument that it's much more important to progress spiritually it's much more important to wash off your emotional patterns the wrong ones at least and it's much more important to give time to these kind of thoughts and um, these kind of philosophies because it'll give you a sense of peace in your day-to-day -day life um then why is romance even a part of human life you know why is like uh when, when we watch a world cup and you see india winning a world cup why does that make you feel so much emotion you know if the the actual truth of human life is listen sit in one place get into your sadhana definitely help people around you be kind of life is that simple why do these other factors exist is it to distract us from what we're meant to do yeah getting into sadhana doesn't mean you're not going to do your roles and responsibilities or whether relationships whether your work your profession spirituality is not a different life it's not it's not two lives so that's why many people often like you said so what had happened what brought you uh -huh. here so nothing has to happen because we've not moved anywhere else it's not a different life spirituality is the way to be in your life mm. in your life not create a different life so if you are an actor you continue acting if you are a cricketer you continue playing cricket but you're just doing it with a different frame of mind that is meditation and spirituality amen so whatever you're doing the vibration of who you are will change in your doing but you don't have to stop what you are doing to work on your sadhana sadhana is not something that we are going to do throughout the day throughout the day we will do the sadhana in activity here not just sit in stillness that's not meditation and spirituality it's like charge your phone in the morning you don't have to charge it throughout the day charge your phone in the morning so charge yourself in the morning come into activity using your phone but while using your phone you check that you're not depleting your power so keep keeping it charged with the quality of your karma so we're not going to leave what we are doing but when we work on the inner being the quality of what we are doing is of a different vibration mm. and you're not doing it to let's say i would not do it for happiness i would not do it for appreciation but i would do it with happiness which means you're not doing it to feel good but you're feeling good and then doing it so you're not using what you're achieving to feel good but you're already feeling good and radiating that into what you're doing mm. so you're not becoming sucking from the world but you are giver to the world what about romance like why does it exist <laughs> like in terms of you know and i'll tell i'll tell you why the only place that i've answered this question i've always had since i was a kid first i've always looked at married couples and asked myself why why even like why is marriage even a thing why why does a man and a woman have to come together okay maybe for reproduction like creating a new life but why is it a thing like you know if you actually go down to the real why like when we were just 2000 3000 human beings on the surface of the earth who decided this yes parallelly whoever you're with romantically can have such a huge impact on your personality can have such a huge impact on how you view the world yes. how you view decisions it's almost like having a very good or very bad habit in your life yes uh, is that the reason that's one question second you know in the west when they're trying to understand spirituality and i actually appreciate that that you know people there are asking those you know questions but sometimes they also misled and there's these other little morphed concepts that come out i don't know if this is a morphed concept or not and i'd love to know what the indian perspective is it's called the twin flames concept like when two souls uh, meet each other in one life and you feel you feel like very you know intense about it and both those souls feel like some that like you were meant to meet and there's like fireworks and it may or may not last hmm. you know but you were very much meant to meet at that point in the time hmm. is that the purpose of romance like you're meant to meet certain friends who will have a certain impact on you everyone you meet in a close energy circle which means not just friends parents siblings anybody who's in your close karmic account in this costume you've met them before and you've met them before you're not meeting them first time so this is exactly what i know and what i believe and all the people that i spoke to that's exactly on point i love it she's validating all my knowledge love it 
So we are souls on the journey, changing our costumes. They are also souls on the journey, changing their costume. Our present relationship with them is a carry forward of how the past relationship was. Not necessarily in the past relationship, I was a parent and child or a husband and wife. No, but I, the soul and you, the soul knew each other in any kind of an interaction. It's like, suppose we are meeting today for the first time. Now, this is a meeting. Now, it depends on what quality this meeting goes. Does it go on a very harmonious meeting? Or does it get bitter if there's an argument and it gets bitter? And then we go our way. And next month, we happen to meet again somewhere. The second meeting will definitely get influenced by how the first meeting went. So if the first meeting was a little bitter, the next meeting will be a little uncomfortable. And if the next meeting, neither of us makes an effort to make it better, then the second meeting will even get tougher. We might probably just ignore each other. Mm. We might just look away. So it started because of the effect of the first meeting. But in the second meeting also, neither of us did a good karma to resolve the bitterness and to heal the energy. Mm. We did. Six months later, we meet again at a friend's place. Now it's the third meeting. But the third meeting will first start with the influence of the previous two meetings. Again, now depends in the third meeting what karma you and me do. If we continue making it worse every meeting, that means the karmic account is getting bitter and bitter and bitter. So some of our karmic accounts in this lifetime are not very happy ones. They might start on a very, but then they sometimes are a cause of a lot of pain. Pain can be in any form. Maybe continuously in the relationship there is pain. Maybe someone loses somebody, there is pain, but there becomes pain in that karmic account. So even if my sum relationship is not in a very good energy in this lifetime, it's like my third or fourth meeting, one of the two has to change the karma. Don't let it carry forward like this because it's only going to get worse. So it started with a simple argument, went to ignoring each other, third absolute indifference, fourth talking ill about each other to the other guests who are saying, why aren't you talking to each other? So every next meeting gets worse. And will you keep meeting that person until you sort it out? You will keep meeting that person because that person is in your very strong karmic pattern cycle. You don't meet only the ones which are with the bitter energy. You are always meeting also the ones which are very Positive. beautiful. Anyone with whom I have a strong karmic account, I will keep mm -hmm. meeting. So the ones which are beautiful, we continue making them even better. Mm. But the ones which are a little uncomfortable, we should sort them out. Do you think we have met before? Of course, we can't meet like this again otherwise. And have this kind of a conversation? Yes. It's it just, just happened. So there was no struggle. There was no, it just happened. So everything is very, you know, once you understand the karma and karmic connections, how it works, life becomes so simple. We don't live a life of blame saying, why are they doing this to me? Why did this happen mm -hmm. to me? How could they do this to me? It's like, what karma do I have to do now with this person? So mm. put aside the ego. This is again where meditation will help to put aside the ego and be the first one to do the right karma now in that relationship. You might not get right energy from there because they are still in the pain of what I have done last time with them. Continue. But because now you are energizing yourself, you have the ability to radiate good energy even if you are not getting good energy from the other side. You are able to do that. This is your spiritual stamina which is building up. So this is what I have to check. If I have been meditating, am I being able to genuinely being nice, not just being nice here, am I be able to genuinely being nice even to those who are not right to me? Mm. then my spiritual stamina is building up. So then I'm creating good karma in this meeting and then my past karmic account is settling. Mm. So that's what you said. Will the consequence still come if we are meditating? Yes, it will. But when that consequence comes, my present karma quality is now changed. So I'm not going to suffer. I'm going to settle that past karmic account. So everyone we are meeting, not just a, the twin flame is not just for that mm -hmm. relationship. Parent and a child, sibling, twins there, friends, Anybody you meet and you suddenly feel, oh, I connect very well with this person. Somebody you meet and you say, I just can't stand this person. It could be at work. We have met before. So we are all continuing with our karmic accounts. Spirituality helps us to create good karmic accounts and to clean any uncomfortable karmic account that we have mm. created before. Mm. Uh, is there Oh, now I wonder what you guys think about this part. Yeah, I, I totally believe... Um, uh, exactly what she's saying. I really like this lady. Uh, I, I think that everyone you have met, um, it's it's like you've met them in your previous lives. Um, and yeah, you come here uh, precisely uh, what she's saying to resolve your karma. Uh, and I guess it's up to you further what she's saying, how you're going to uh, let it go. Although I am, I, I do have a certainly not like I would have bad relationships or anything in my personal life, but um, I certainly do have a way to go because sometimes, um, 
what I, I'm not a biggest fan of is when people are moralizing and they are very righteous, especially from like a church community. And that is something I, you know, I, I say like treat people with kindness, but also respect your boundaries. Like that, that she just made me think, I wonder what you guys think, because I am not going to proactively engage with someone who is um, just simply not on my wavelength. Like, what, what is the point in that? I feel like we as humans need to appreciate uh, the relationships, but also appreciate things for, for what they are. And if there is, like, let's say if you're just not vibing with someone, I would not go out of the, the way um, to, or, or for example, when someone would like do you wrong or like there, there would be like some sort of a misunderstanding and you fully understand that the problem is on their end. Um, I think from your perspective or like from my perspective would be, um, I can appreciate, let's say if the person doesn't want to talk to me, right? Like I, I can appreciate if they don't want to talk to me and that's fine. Um, because, uh, Let's say I know I've done nothing wrong and it's just their emotional immaturity. And in that sense, I'm just going to let it go because uh, I don't need negative people in my life, no matter how long they've been in it. And if, if they're not emotionally mature enough to see, they're not aware because they're not doing meditation, uh, how they're acting. I think it's their karma. And I feel like I would love to know actually your perspective on this because like, yeah, I, I personally wouldn't want to engage because I don't want a negativity in my life. Uh, and, and let's say someone being like very self-righteous, um, you know, I don't know if you meet these types of people. I, I really don't appreciate that uh, because uh, it, it to me it just shows a lack of any emotional intelligence, any awareness about this world. And why would I waste my energy that I can fuel into, let's say, positive relationships? And I, I wonder if he's going to be talking further about uh, the kind of twin flames and soulmates connection. So in the Western world, I don't know if you know these concepts. So you have a soulmate and twin flame. Soulmate is more like a... Uh, a passion connection. Uh, we we have a lot of soul soulmates, uh, souls that we met in our previous life that we share a strong connection with. Uh, they're not meant to. Uh, they're different school of thoughts, but from the my understanding that I've read over many years is like soulmates are not meant to work out. Now tw twin flame is a very different connection, but it, it's the difficult connection where you have a runner and a chaser. This kind of, <coughs> excuse me, the philosophy behind that, that it's kind of um, two souls that are supposed to complete each other. But the way it's completed is that you have one soul that at the beginning of, let's say, creation or whatever, it's split and then it's seeking to unite. Um, but uh, I, I do believe in, in, uh, in Twin Flames. I do believe in like soulmates in the sense that we have exactly what she says that you met these people before and with some you have more karma to resolve some less karma to resolve so in the in the western world it's perhaps described in a different way but it actually means exactly what she was talking about it's just simply with cer certain souls you feel maybe you have done many more past lives and you have a stronger bond so uh when i have Oddly enough, around me, many people are like breaking up in, in long relationships. And I was just telling um, some friends that, listen, like, uh, you know, when it comes to relationships, I look at things very different. I look at it from a spiritual point of view. Like, I'm a, I know now I'm a soul. And I know that, you know, all the people I'm meeting, they are from my past life. And, you know, with some souls, you just come to clear your karmic debt, exactly what she's saying. And you just, and that's it. That's the end of the relationship. You've taken everything you needed. I've taken everything I've needed. And then we go our separate way until we basically meet the, the, the right person for us or the right soul for us. And there are many right souls out there. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't see that tragically as many people. Of course, it hurts when you've been with someone for, I don't know, it's considerable amount of time. But... It's just, I feel like if you have that belief system and the awareness, um, it just makes things much easier. But let's continue. The purpose of marriage? 
in modern human society yeah, it's their choice <laughs> it's a choice it's an absolute choice uh, why should you make that choice it's up to the individual depending on their sanskar and karma they've already carried that karmic pattern it would be written in their destiny chart if they have to get married or not mm. because they've already created that karmic account as to who is going to be the one that's pre decided that's pre what about couples that end up getting divorced that is also pre decided if if they change their present karma then that divorce will not happen so if you have that written in your because some people can see it in their destiny chart oh this marriage will happen but it will not last for very long take it up take it up that this marriage will last because i'm going to change my present karma mm. that is what it means don't live like a you know victim of only that balance sheet create new karma change the way you're doing business now and you're not going to live just based on what you started the financially or with so don't hold that destiny chart like a reality manual it's a probability manual not a reality manual i create my reality so even if there's anything written which is not very we can change it mm. but we just have to put genuine effort that's where meditation and spirituality definitely helps because you can't just put effort unless you energize yourself it's like you can't build up your stamina physically unless you do something for it whatever yeah. you choose to do but you have to do something to build up the stamina so something has to be done to start creating the right karma mm. feel free not to even talk about this if you don't wish to okay uh, and and i'll tell you why i'm bringing this up i've been listening to a lot of podcasts from archaeologists and people who study ancient human history and these kind of things uh, and they spoke about what a big role uh, natural substances have played in the expansion of human consciousness in the past and this is not ganja cannabis it's not things like that or uh, because that's for recreation this is like higher experiences there's something called ayahuasca from south america there is a uh, psilocybin mushrooms peyote was used by uh, native americans to expand consciousness and to kind of experience higher spiritual states come back down to the human experience and then chase those same things using meditation you know uh, I, i believe even in india we had a culture of som som ras som uh, whatever whatever it was yes. um they say that the last 3 4 generations of the world are the only generations that have not really really like used these substances because all the other generations in the world history have had a history of using these uh, of using these substances the question is one why have the last 3 4 generations stopped using it? again it's not us encouraging mm. drug use or anything like that and two do you believe that there are these like magical herbs out there that give you higher experiences which make you understand that there are the worlds kind of merged in our world there are other beings with us which are able to probably see there are messages out there that you're able to take in you know these kind of high experiences you get in meditation there are actually sort of fast track ways to just get a glimpse of it and, and then come back down i don't know about these substances but if there's any substance which can give you an experience but then you cannot stay in that experience then there's of no use of taking that substance you have to create that experience you have to create that experience on your journey if some substance is just making you feel high not divine divine is what is the result of a meditation and spirituality not just a high feeling those are more a distraction where my other emotions are like it's like shutting down the files are, are you uh, familiar with som somras jo which we talk about yeah. see again that is what we're hearing about what's written in the scriptures right ke somras din shivratri pe we have bhang so why is that bhang what is the significance of bhang would anybody really have bhang on the day when they have to connect to the divine no that bhang actually everything that we listen to and we read it is actually supposed to give a spiritual meaning to it we are looking at it in a physical way it means that when you connect to the divine you will experience intoxication a spiritual intoxication mm. to be able to show it in terms of a form of a presentation or a story i'm making it physical and saying so they had bhang and so they were intoxicated so it is not the intoxication of the bhang it is the intoxication of the spiritual connection that you had with the divine so everything that we do on a festival for example all the rituals they are not actually physical they all have a meaning of what we are supposed to create inside but to explain it to people that you know do this and then this is what you will do but later on as time progress so from the copper age dwapar yug we were given these little little things to learn how we should be but now that we are in the kal yug and in the end of kal yug we are only doing the rituals celebrating the festival but not taking the spiritual lesson from that for example now we will have ganesh chaturthi then we will have navratri then we will have the sera then we will have diwali they are not just festivals which have to be celebrated outside so ganesh chaturthi means beginning becoming that one who is able to destroy the obstacles the vighan vinashak ganesh which means the destroyer of the obstacles who is going to be the destroyer of the obstacles i have to be the destroyer of the obstacles i have to be the one who should be able to finish the sorrow and radiate happiness to all so the dukha harta sukha karta so shri ganesh ji teaches us 
that you know the ears should be such that you just filter out everything the trunk should be such that you're loveful and lawful that you're able to pick up a needle you're also able to uproot a tree so you are sharp but yet you are strong so everything everything about shri ganesh ji then comes navratri so the art eight arms of the deity it doesn't mean somebody was born with eight arms it is symbolic so it is teaching us that every soul has eight powers the power to withdraw the power to discern the power to adjust the power to judge the power to cooperate now those eight powers of the soul how should i show it in a diagram so i show it as eight arms then we have ravan with 10 heads that doesn't mean there was somebody with 10 heads so those 10 heads are our 10 vices lust greed jealousy so when i finish my 10 vices there will be diwali so diwali is lighting the diya so lighting the diya means being a giver diya means to give and when one lights the diya then you will have the power to light the other ones diya mm. this is all symbolic for us to do something here so somras and bhang is also symbolic it doesn't mean i have to have that to. substance to experience that intoxication mm. i have to experience that intoxication which i will experience if i have the divine connection yeah um you know you mentioned mata right now uh, with eight arms and all that um when it comes to this aspect of divine feminine in our culture i have like so many questions like i want to have a deeper understanding of it and let me begin this conversation by asking you what the reality of being a woman is and i'll tell you why on the show we've had a lot of male monks i think you're i don't know if i can call you like a monk like the first female a uh, sort of spiritual leader who's come on the show um and this question is coming from a place of having gone to a meet and greet in 2018 and a girl had actually asked me that why are there fewer female spiritual leaders in our country than male and i had no answer i didn't even know what to say so now i'm asking you that question like is do you think that's true firstly and secondly like what is the reality of being a woman and thirdly then we'll go into whole mata conversation see once you are living with the consciousness that you are a soul that consciousness of being a woman doesn't remain okay because soul consciousness not is not a concept it's a way of living so before understanding that i will live in a consciousness that i'm a girl so i'm going 25 years back so who am i i'm a girl so i will perceive everything through that consciousness i am an engineer now i will start seeing through that consciousness i am a hindu or i am an indian so that's my consciousness of who i am consciousness is like a lens so depending on the lens i wear i will perceive everything in the world so when i am in the consciousness i am a girl i'm going to say you are a boy then that difference is there i am rich you are not i am hindu you are muslim these are all my lenses these are lenses of everything that i have achieved and acquired in this lifetime but spirituality meant removing all these lenses because they are not my true identity it's like removing all these labels and coming back to who i am and now practicing i'm living in that consciousness i am a soul talking to another soul so i would not even remember this thing male female no mm. no okay. because that's been the practice of 25 years mm. and it's the aim is to reach there to a stage where i will never come out of that consciousness do you think that because of the way our society is and you know often girls in small towns are that's a conditioning of society as a soul you have been in female bodies you have been in female bodies okay and you have been in male bodies so have i so every soul has all the sanskars so but when the baby is born so now in this birth i'm born in a female body now the social conditioning will start a girl should be like this a girl should be like this a girl should be like this so with that social conditioning some of my sanskars will be coming into activity and some of my sanskars will get merged it's because of my present conditioning but every soul has all the sanskars there's no such thing as feminine sanskars masculine sa- no it's the sanskars of the soul not sanskars of the body mm. but when i take birth in a particular body the world will say you should be using this sanskar so the world will say speak like this don't speak like this laugh like this don't laugh like this walk like this don't walk like this the society is teaching me and making me create that sanskar and some of us don't do it don't some of us don't get affected by what society is saying then society will say oh this girl is behaving very boyish or this boy is behaving very feminine mm. because the soul has both the sanskars it all depends which sanskar you are going to use in your lifetime so the soul does the sanskar doesn't depend on the gender the sanskar is of the soul and every soul has been in and the yeah I want to ask you about this divine feminine angle. Like this is there actually in all of the world's religions. We've had Dr. Ajay Prabhakar on the show, who's an Africanist, and he studied all of world cultures. He said something very interesting. He said that in parts of Africa, they have their own version of Shivji, but it's depicted yes. as a woman. Mm-hmm. 
you know it's depicted as sort of the feminine aspect of shivji hmm. then in india obviously we have like mata culture um they do have feminine entities in egyptian culture as well yes. in native american culture what were our ancestors trying to tell us when they even divided it into male and female or was that their flaw that they couldn't look beyond gender can we go back to the cycle again mm. the golden age and the silver age souls are divine it's on this planet it's not the golden age silver age is nowhere somewhere else in the golden age silver age there is no religion because the soul is perfect body is perfect nature is perfect there is no experience of pain and so you don't even think of the divine that's what is called paradise you can call it heaven call it paradise call it swarg call it satyo call it golden age after the afternoon which means when the evening starts golden age and silver age we are natural soul conscious these souls are divine souls and so they are called as deities today deities not by a religion deities not by a religion just the whole society the whole community is a divine soul mm-hmm. everybody everybody it's the morning of the day it's the morning of the day then collective consciousness reduces when you come by copper age the soul has taken birth used costumes gradually we start getting attached to the body and i start forgetting just the trace not what i am today just the trace i start forgetting i am a soul and i start getting attached to my body and i start looking at the other person also as what is visible so that is when the first trace first trace not like today the first trace of ego the first trace of lust mm. the first trace of greed the first trace today is like peak so just the first. when that first trace starts the divinity of society starts starts just mm. little waning off that is when religion starts religion means teachers philosophers who come to start teaching us to go back to who we were you know it's like a child moving away from their potential so there is a teacher brought in to say like take care of this child so religious heads prophets everybody came was teaching us one thing god is one we are a family and then peace is our religion love unity that is where from the copper age we have all the prophets religious heads teachers philosophers they all came with one message we did not connect to the teaching we started connecting to the teacher there again was ego consciousness mm-hmm. so i said that my teacher is different from you so we suddenly became different reached to a stage end of iron age where we are fighting in the name of religion whereas religion was in the name of bringing us together mm. but not taking religion as a teaching but only what we are doing in terms of our lifestyle we thought you're different i am different this one's different that one is different and today we've divided into some major religions on the planet and then those religions also got further divided so we started only moving away from what was the truth so there are two words dharma and karma dharma means religion religion means the religion of the soul and karma is my action my behavior so what was taught to us by all teachers was the truth but everybody will have a different way of teaching it hmm right mm-hmm. if someone had to describe this candle everyone will describe it differently mm-hmm. somebody will describe it with a story somebody will describe it with a metaphor somebody will describe it with a poem but they are all talking about the same candle so what every teacher was teaching us was teaching us about the powers of the soul the quality of the soul the dharma of the soul which means the religion of the soul and what is our potential everyone was teaching method different examples different metaphors different presentation different as time progressed we are forgetting the essence we are forgetting what they were teaching we are only focused on the example the metaphor and the presentation and that's where we say what you are saying is different what i am saying is different what that religion is teaching is different what, no religion is teaching different everyone's teaching the same thing so go to the core the essence so when we say the feminine energy again it's not feminine energy it's the soul power it's the soul power but it is called shiv and shakti that's why it's said as feminine it's called shiv and shakti so shiv is for the divine power supreme soul again called by different names but that's just a name we can say supreme soul i can say god i can say parmatma i can say allah i can say word different reality is one then in hinduism i can say shiv it's a name so you are one different people can call you by different names but if i forget who you are and only look at the names i will think you're two different people but actually you're one person just being called by different names so god and soul they are the two energies god and soul supreme soul and soul so somebody said shiv and shakti parmatma and atma but it is not male 
and female. Hmm. It's not male and female. It is Paramatma and Atma. They are the two entities on this planet. God and souls. Then the souls have then presented it in a different way. So when we say the Shakti, it is the Shakti. Shakti means power. So whose power? Your own. Your own power. So how do I present that power? How do I explain to somebody these powers? And how does somebody worship those powers? Because people wanted to worship that Shakti. Actually, they were taught to us for us to imbibe that Shakti. Mm. To invoke that Shakti. Not invoke that Shakti like this. Invoke that Shakti like this. We are invoking from there as if somebody is going to come from there. Mm. Invoke the Shakti within. Yeah, also, you know, because this is a duality based concept, there's two things. I yeah. think the easiest duality for a human mind to understand is male and That's female. So. But it's actually Shiv and Shakti means the supreme soul and soul. Paramatma and Atma. God and I. You know, when we spoke about religions on earth and fighting each other and ego battles and religions and getting further divided in themselves and saying my religion is better than yeah. your religion, etc. Uh, let's take the entire human population and move them to the moon and then look back at our earth as one blue ball and everything that's ever happened in human history is on that blue ball. Yes. Now, when you take it really, really far into space, the earth becomes one dot yes. in like a galaxy of things. My question to you is about the galaxy. Is that the purpose of space and planets to teach us how small and insignificant we are? And also to know who we are. It's not about we are insignificant. All this is not happening because we have forgotten. But it is happening because we have forgotten who I am. If I forget, if just visualize that tomorrow you forget who you are. You forget that you are Ranbir. How will life be? You forget who you are. You forget who is your family. You forget you do this podcast. You just forget everything. Some people go through that, no? Just forget. How will life become? How will life be? Challenging. That's what life is today. We've forgotten our source. I have forgotten who I am. I've forgotten who you are. I've forgotten the purpose of me being here. We've forgotten that we are one. Yes. Mm. I have forgotten who is my divine parent. I have forgotten what is my potential. I have forgotten what is my Shakti. So I am looking for it, everything outside mm. who I actually am. Mm. So every teacher, right from Copper Age to even today, is teaching us only that, to come back to our religion. Religion the religious teachers, so Jesus Christ, Gautam Buddh, Muhammad, Mahavir, Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Shri Sai Baba, they didn't come to divide us. They in fact did not come to establish a religion. They were not establishing a religion. They were teaching religion. They were teaching religion. Religion means dharam. Dharam means the duty, the quality of the soul. Which means what is your duty? So the duty or the quality of the soul is purity, peace, love power, mm. wisdom and bliss. These are the seven qualities of the soul. So every teacher came to teach us only that, that this is your dharam, bring it into your every karam. And this is the dharam of every soul. Mm -hmm. So they did not come to create religions. They came to teach religion. Had we connected to the teaching, we would have all been, mm. because we would have said, oh, we're all learning the same thing and we're implementing the same thing. We did not connect so much to the teaching. Mm. And as time progressed and we reached the Iron Age, we were only connecting to the teacher. Mm. And then under the teacher, there were more teachers. So within one religion also, then different teachers. Now, a different teacher will always say the same concept in a little different manner. Mm. Two people cannot teach the same thing in an identical manner. But just because two people presented the same concept of dharam in two different manners, we went and got mm. divided again. I follow this one. I follow. We were not supposed to follow people. Mm. We were supposed to follow what they were sharing. And follow means... Follow, mm. not follow, mm -hmm. follow, 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 follow it, make it a part of your life. So we are supposed to follow religion. And if we follow religion, we will all become one. Mm. united. But then body consciousness and ego consciousness reach to such a stage that today we're becoming intolerant. Mm. We can't mm. and we're ready to, yeah. we know what's happening. Mm. You know, speaking about tolerance again, uh, I've been reading a lot about something called cataclysmic events, which basically means that every sort of 10,000, 15,000 years or so, there's some events that happen in the earth cycle which just destroy everything. Like that's how the dinosaurs also died. That's how human populations have constantly kind of been boiled down to nothingness and then grown out of there. And this is the history we're not taught in schools. This is the history that archaeologists are suggesting actually existed. For example, they found batteries inside the pyramids. So who's to say that ancient cultures also, they probably were technologically advanced. And the only reason we don't have remnants of their cultures because time and nature destroys everything, including plastic over 3000 years. So in the three lakh years of human history, how many times have we seen cataclysmic events? How many times have we seen things eroding away? You know, and um, 
the the kind of big message from our ancestors according to archaeologists is one take care of nature yes. and two have balance between the duality of life yes uh have balance between what they call male and female aspect but after this particular episode that's become clearer so before i let you go sister shivani i've got to ask you one personal question as in it's not about me it's just a question in my heart yeah. uh what is the purpose of outer space like the universe we know it's out there ancient humans knew it's out there ancient humans also knew that asteroids come from there hmm. you know that these are things out of our control hmm. uh for example there's something called the torrid meteor stream that hits earth every like uh, 10000 years or so and it's been responsible for all these events what are we supposed to make of the big like nothingness out there is that god's way of saying that listen you're very small like or is it something else are we supposed to go out there like elon musk is trying to occupy mars and then i'm sure like we've had an astronaut on the show as well who explained to me that space travel works in increments right so first you figure out how to go to the moon then you figure out how to go to mars then you figure out how to go to the next planet etc etc but um what is the purpose of space why does it exist this is astronomy no spirituality will teach us something different okay we have to go but we are going to go to the soul world which is beyond this universe yeah where did we come from mm. and where, why is the population still increasing mm. population has always been on the increase is it because so, animals are turning into human beings no animal doesn't become a human being okay. a human soul will take birth as a human soul with your sanskar and with your karmic account but why is population still increasing population is increasing because we're coming from the soul world and that's why you know if you see people say oh i want mukti i want moksha i want to get out of this thing and i just want, we always look up somewhere we're not very clear what's there up somewhere but we keep saying i want to go home i want i want to come out of this birth rebirth cycle even when we think of the divine when we think of god we go there yeah the place of worship or the temple could be here in my room but when i say god i'll go there so the soul has a very faint memory of where we have come from who we were with we are here and how we will go back and that is that timing which is coming now when things which are happening will happen everything that the world is preparing for then we will go in big numbers mm. there's a very big shift that's going to happen mm. the golden age population is not going to be the population of iron age much smaller very small mm. so gradually from golden age silver age copper age iron age population goes on increasing and then decreasing and in the last 100 150 years the population has increased and it's still increasing which means some souls are still coming so just try and visualize this beyond everything that science knows because science can only know that what is visible mm. through a machine or through where i can travel physically wherever you go whether it's to the moon or to the mars you're going physically so that's the physical world what we call the universe the soul will travel to the soul world there's no body that's going there mm. everywhere here every planet we are going with this body so there's a soul world where which is beyond everything that science knows so let's call it home let's call it home mm. let's call god the parent and we're all the children mm. so just visualize little stars just like the stars we see in the sky at night these souls in the soul world and then as per what frequency i take myself to mm-hmm. by the end of this cycle mm-hmm. this is a cycle like you said those cycles mm-hmm. what vibrational frequency i take myself to by the end of this iron age and what things will happen on the planet souls will go to the soul world so let's say i take myself up to 50 hypothetically on a vibration of 10 to 100 somebody takes themselves up to 90 somebody takes themselves up to 100 and then we're all there okay so now visualize all the souls different purity level different vibrational mm-hmm. level now the planet and there's never a time when there is no soul on the planet so when we say destruction it's not that the world comes to an end it'll never come to an end but it'll go through a transformation but the transformation is so gradual that you won't even come to know that there's a transition mm-hmm. that is happening mm-hmm. where we will be going and we will also be coming it's like you're working throughout the day you'll go home and come back to work so now visualize almost all of us are back home and the golden age has started which we created with our vibration so the golden age hypothetically let's call it a frequency of 100 which means the best so those souls who took themselves up to 100 will automatically get pulled down Mm. automatic there's nothing god is not sending us okay now you go now you go mm-hmm. it's depending on where i took myself up to those souls will come down in the golden age by silver age let's say it's 80 the souls who are 80 will come down copper age let's say it's 50 the souls who reached up to 50 will come down iron age is mm. souls are still coming so that's something if you experience in your meditation you'll be able to start seeing this you can actually go to the soul world 
using the power of your mind and intellect and see this is the home this is that divine parent connect with that divine parent because only connecting to the higher power will start raising your frequency it's like again connecting the phone to the powerhouse mm. you have to connect a battery connecting to a battery cannot charge but a battery connecting to a powerhouse so this is the time the change of cycle where souls will be going home which the souls are asking for oh we want to go we want mukti we want to go home and then we will start coming as per our frequency, frequency. vibrational frequency and the world will again come into a cycle so what you said it goes into a cycle yes it goes into a cycle and there is a destruction but destruction doesn't mean everything finish but there is a lot of upheaval a lot of upheaval we're going to one right now we are and it's only going to increase it's obvious mm. we can see what's happening on the planet mm. whether it's in terms of environment whether it's in terms of and these things have happened before these things have happened before it's a cycle morning was there before hmm afternoon evening night was there before the cycle is only repeating so this will be a time of a lot of uh, upheaval but along with that a time of awakening so it's like the old house crumbling and the new house under construction hmm. there's never going to be a time where we are without a house Mm. Mm. so we are all instrumental by working on our sanskars and vibration we're all helping to construct the new house so each one of us each one mm. who is trying to raise their vibration in whichever manner they feel right which means creating a shift in yourself everybody's talking about the shift so the shift in the planet will only happen with the shift in the individual there's nobody else who will come and shift the energy of the planet we create our world so every individual today just ask yourself do i want to shift in this direction Or do I want to shift in this direction? If I'm shifting in this direction, it's not just a personal shift. I'm contributing to creating the world shift. I'm a part of that tipping point population who's going to be instrumental in changing the night into the morning. But before that, we will go to the soul world, and we will come back with our frequency vibration. Is it fair to say that space is just a reminder of us to like look up yes. and mm-hmm. go beyond? Of course, knowing that the world is not just us, not just this much. What is what we know about and what is visible there's much 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 more beyond that also just shivani i think we've reached the end of this episode i hope the experience was all right for you beautiful not all right okay not all right. okay so i believe this is the end to the podcast i don't i want to know how you guys feel for for those that you're watching i i feel this beautiful vibration frequency of her soul i love her i wish i could do podcasts with her i i don't know there is just something very soothing calming nice about her i'll be curious just simply what you guys think i don't know it um i don't know if it was visible during the podcast but sometimes i felt like i have this hyper focus like almost a t- tunnel vision I don't know. I don't know it's because I'm sleep depleted <laughs> and I'm trying to focus or that's something about her. But I was like wow. I really loved uh, the energy and I loved everything that she was saying and uh, I think what really intrigued me towards the end when they were discussing the cycle and uh, that we are at a tipping point and I was like I hope it's it's going to flip now. Huh? I think we've seen enough in this world, and she says it's going to be increasing. So my heart sank a little, but I think that the message is very positive one, and especially from the part one where we talked about the news and you know, like we can change the world if we change ourselves. And sometimes people are going around and trying to fix other people, not seeing. they first should look, really look after themselves because if they do and what she said it usually ripples through like there is no other way you you start radiating and you start affecting people just by your presence which i think is so powerful so well when we don't have when we all of us or most of us have awakened and we will stop feeding certain narratives that are going in, in in the world and and start putting energy in something productive and things can change but i feel like many people they watch the news <laughs> um they're just so hugged and they don't understand they are creating and feeding into the negative 
and as I said before, you have to have the polarities and no judgment. But I think what she's explaining it that that the world is cyclical. So yes, yeah, so that would have been the golden silver age, and and then you know what goes up must come down. That's just the the reality of the universe. So um, that is. Um, I, I, I think that she really beautifully explained all those concepts. Um, it's it's hundred percent what I am very much aligned with. I'm just trying to check if there was anything uh, else that I wanted to um, uh, to mention. Um, I loved. I don't know if you guys noticed about like when he, she said that the souls are automatically downloaded. So with that one, I wanted to mention that I have someone like very very close to me. Like it's not like you know a, a friend of a friend of a friend, but my dear uh, friend. And he remembers coming into this world, and um, yeah, he remembers picking up, uh, talking to a soul guide, picking up the lessons and all that. So. Um, there's so a lot of things that I know are also personal experiences of people that I've met one-on-one -on -one, uh, and they're very close. And uh, I think uh, from what I am aware of from like the wider study is that um, we also travel in a soul groups um, and uh, kind of incarnate around the same time. And um, uh, basically we are because they were there uh, they touched base on, on the point of like the the universe and existence apparently i don't know if you're and i mentioned that many videos before familiar with galactic history i think galactic history is very interesting to understand how we got here as a species or you know how we've evolved and all of that um but we are apparently the great experiment on, on the planet earth and um uh, for what I know, for example, for those that are afraid of nuclear, you know, kind of conflict and stuff like that, apparently this is being procured by the other souls out there. <laughs> um, because uh, if, if something like that would to happen, it would ripple out through the universe and it would affect different kind of races and stuff uh, like that. Uh, so... Uh, so yeah, we are all connected. We're all one on microcosm and macrocosm. But as a souls, uh, our planet apparently has been special. It's been battle between the good and evil forces who is going to inhabit and take that planet as a as a resource. Um, and uh, apparently, our planet is very special. Uh, it's uh, it it. Th this is why I think there is a lot of souls still coming because, <coughs> excuse me, apparently. Uh, on this planet Earth, you are able to learn uh, life lessons way faster than you would uh, in any other planetary system. So everyone wants to wants to come back, and I, I guess you are able to clear your karma maybe faster. And you know, like I really love when she referred to like so going back home as a purity, and I, that's kind of how I would imagine like we are soul and eternal journey for lack of a better word, looking like trying to get to enlightenment, but you are able to, you know, like increase your steadily, I guess, your vibration over a lifetime, if you learn. Uh, so I love when she, uh, when she used that uh, analogy, it's been truly beautiful. And I would love to know from you guys, like what actually has resonated the most um, for you, because sometimes, you know, like you, you, you hear the same concept 20 times, and sometimes someone for you puts it that way. What she was actually saying, you have different teachers, everyone uses different words. And sometimes it just hits you. It just clicks you with that particular person because maybe they speak more of your language and uh, you more maybe more aligned to their idea of world. So I would love to know uh, from you, like what you, what, what has really hit you from this podcast or like it doesn't mean that it had to be new but it's kind of like sometimes like it's anchoring the knowledge that you have i would love to know that in the comments below and with that being said thank you so much for watching this podcast with me i really hope you enjoyed it and if you did please give thumbs up share like and subscribe to this channel and i will see you next one until then please do take care i'm sending lots and lots of love Bye bye